Hello, everyone. Welcome back with another episode of uh, UBIT Cafe. Our guest today is Vasya Weber, the CEO of Viberate. Yeah. Here you are, Vasya. Uh, nice to meet you. It's very nice to meet you too. Well, nice, nice to meet you. Have you here in uh, our new episode of UBIT Cafe uh, to talk about uh, Viberate. Your platform is uh, probably one of the best standard in the world about um, uh, being a database of uh, everything actually in the music industry, from art artists uh, to songs uh, to festival to labels uh, to pretty much everything a uh, music professional needs to know about the industry. So how are you doing? And uh, um, let's talk about uh, this amazing project. That, how did everything start for you? So, yeah, thanks for having me and thanks for the nice words. It's always nice to hear such compliments. Um, yeah, it's it started um, back when I was still managing. So um, I was managing one of the biggest techno DJs, um, Umek, uh, for over, over 12 years. Um, and we were, so we were looking for tools that would help us with growing his career. Um, we didn't know how different tours, releases, or um, ad campaigns were influencing his popularity. Uh, so we started a simple website that was measuring popularity of DJs. It was only for DJs because we were specializing in, in techno. Um, and we started with a thousand DJs that we entered manually. It was top thousand DJs in the world. And then we said, let's open the platform. And let's see if people are going to add additional artists. And they added 35,000 artists in less than, less than one and a half year. Um, so we saw that there was a clearly a need on the market um, for business intelligence tool. I mean, every, every industry has it. So finance has Bloomberg, but music didn't have anything. So we, we raised our seed round and fast forward Eight years from our beginning, we now have 35 people full time and 150 database curators across the world. It's a full blown company, and I'm not managing anymore because I don't have any time. How many users do you actually have, uh, currently have uh, on your platform on Vibrate? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I'll have to check that, but it's, it's in tens of thousands of registered users. Absolutely. Chad, that's stunning, actually. And uh, how, how many artists actually put their song and their data on, uh, on your uh, platform? So artists don't have to put their songs. Uh, they have to put their, their um, links, uh, hmm. so their official links to, to the channels that we track, and then we we'll pull, uh, pull out the song, their, their catalog, start tracking it. So it, it's, it's all done automatically. Oh, nice. uh, but if you don't find anything here, you can still add it because it's a crowdsourced platform. So it's, it's a platform that is actually built by fans and artists. Um, we don't, so we don't have like an external source of like a database of artists that, that we could use. Um, everything is built by our community. So um, it'll, it'll happen from time to time um, that you won't find an artist in our database. <laughs> you can click on add artists, add artist, and you add their links. Our curation team is going to check if everything is correct. Um, and then we're going to start tracking an artist. This, mm -hmm. is, this is how we, how we grow. And this actually revolutionized everything around the day. The role of the A and R in uh, in the industry. So uh, every music professional from uh, any label, from uh, uh, the little ones to the major label, can actually pinpoint every data they can. Um, is this actually a you know a, a revolutionized uh, tool for uh, uh, big labels uh, such as the smallest one? So yeah, I mean big labels usually have their own solutions. Um, they, so the, all three majors have some of their internal software and the entire analytics departments, they're processing their own, uh, data for their own artists. Um, so, um, most of our target groups are actually independent labels. 
um, not so much majors. I mean, majors do use this, but not not on such a large scale as as uh, indies and distributors. Uh, because yeah, it's it's a wonderful NR tool. So seven hundred thousand unique profiles of artists, all ranked, um, grouped by their genres, subgenres, countries, um, ranked by by their popularity. So if you want to find a breakthrough artist, like a breakthrough rapper from Norway. Mm-hmm. we have this in just i mean a couple of clicks and you have the 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 fastest growing norwegian rappers i don't know who they are but yeah you can look it up anytime you want uh it's it's impossible even if you're a very if, if you're a, an expert in a certain genre there's no way you can keep track of the explosive growth of the music industry yeah that's actually um, Fascinating, not even for the labels, uh, for the independent ones, but even for the festival. I mean, if you want to put yeah. up a, a lineup, you can actually check probably the popularity of um, any kind of artist in uh, any area and trying to mm-hmm. uh, build a, a lineup uh, around that, around those data. And uh, can you actually um, contact the artist uh, from your platform uh, directly? No, not directly, not yet. This is something that that's coming. Um... But we have their own, they're, they're all official links. So mm. you can you can go to their website, you can connect through them to, to Facebook or, or Instagram or whatever. Mm. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, this is completely free of charge. Um, but yeah, like you said, festivals are also heavily using Vibrate for uh, especially bigger festivals that want to book support lineup because, uh, a big U.S. electronic music festival has to book like 400 DJs for one night, I mean, for one edition. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, you don't need a service to tell you that Calvin Harris is a good headliner, but you do need a service to book all those support up-and-coming artists who are playing during the day in a festival that no one knows, but you still want to have someone who's growing uh, and who's getting, who's slowly getting there. Uh, and especially someone who has fans in the general area of the festival, because if if you're organizing a festival in London, you can go to Vibrate and you can if you can shortlist artists who you're interested in, and then just check how much um, monthly listeners and streaming services they come they, they have from London. So if if you find an artist who has like 20,000 monthly listeners um, across streaming services coming from London, that's a pretty good that's piece of information good. because mm-hmm. those people are probably going to want to hear that artist like. Uh, actually, another question. You launched your own um, token, your Vibrate token. And um, as of uh, last week, probably, uh, Spotify uh, started the beta for uh, some playlist uh, that actually used the, the, the NFTs of uh, their users uh, to access some uh, kind of playlist. And uh, as soon as they announced it, uh, uh, your token uh, skyrocketed for like 33 to 40%. Uh, so I wanted to ask you um, how this uh, web free uh, thing that uh, was really actually out uh, in the last year and after the pandemic, uh, someone has some doubt about uh, its future. Um, How is it going um, for you uh, in the next year? So yeah, I mean the, the 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 price hike of the token wasn't because of Spotify. It was because Binance listed the USDT pair. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. but it, it was just coincidence that they were correlated. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of Web three, so we are, um, yeah, we're in, in in essence we are a crypto company um, with our own token listed on on Binance, and it's it's a very liquid token. So. I think that to this date, we we already exceeded twenty billion dollars in trading volume lifetime, mm. with a B, <laughs> billion. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's actually <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, we we are currently heavily underway with with our um, Web three project. I'm not able to disclose too much information about it, but it will make sense. So as mm. you said yourself, a lot of Web three projects were just inflating the bubble. So it was a lot of collectibles that weren't really rare. Um, the, the bubble, as for most crypto bubbles, it blew up, it bursts. So now people aren't willing to pay 
an amount that would buy you a house for a JPEG. Mm. Um, but we we think that the the real util utility of NFTs is elsewhere in the music industry, not collectibles. Mm. Working on right now, and it will come out later this year. And do you think it is, uh, will help um, even smaller artists as um, as the big ones? Yeah, so it is it is targeted towards independent artists, uh, mm. not the really big ones. Oh, okay, so the the main concern about you is uh, implementing this for the smaller ones. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, not for really small ones, so it's somewhere in the middle. Uh, but it's it's not it's definitely not going to be something that uh, really big artists who are assigned to majors are going to be after it. Probably mm. not. But mm. you never know in crypto. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're actually right. Um, so, oh man, I, I don't know. I am so curious about uh, the user you are going to have them. But okay, if you uh, don't, uh, if, if you can't disclose it, uh, no worry. I just wanted to ask you: How do you see uh, your company in five years from now? As uh, you know, the industry is constantly changing, uh, and the music business is actually constantly changing. So, how will you put? Where will you put Vibrate in the next five years? Uh, in uh, in this market? I have no idea because things are changing so fast. So, <laughs> I mean, every startup, of course, is, is after an exit. So um, we might be a part of a bigger company and in five years, there is a lot of interest um, from flower companies to buy Vibrate. Um, mm. Right now, it's, it's not the best time to sell companies because the prices are really, really low because of the whole situation. So, we're actually raising our next round of financing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in five years, I think that, yeah, someone should should get a bias. Uh, and hopefully we get a, a partner who's going to understand what we did and what we're doing, and they're going to support us further. Mm. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you already have a lot of partners. So you're coming a lot of uh, way since uh, you started your beta back in, uh, it was 2016, right? Well, yeah, yeah, something I will have a check, but yeah, it was around 2016. Nice. Uh, I wanted to shift a little bit uh, of the question um, because uh, we as UBIT um, are looking forward to the IMS. You were there last mm -hmm. uh, year, right? Yeah. Uh, we met you actually. And uh, <laughs> so, um, how do you see an event like that? And how do you see the um, electronic music? as uh, of right now, uh, that is working. I mean, you, as you said, you were working with the Umek, uh, that is actually a co-founder of your, of your platform. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you see the, this industry as um, the IMS is approaching uh, next May, uh, next April, sorry, um, and its future within your, um, your platform? So yeah, our background is electronic music. So we, 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 Slide to also focus more features towards catering the electronic music business, although we do cater to all of the genres. But so a, a proof of that is we have a Beatport dashboard, which is something that other um, services don't have. Um, but I mean, it's it's still somewhere where our hearts are. So we, we want to keep in touch with, with the electronic music scene. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to IMS this year as well. Nice. Um, because I, I just like I'm constantly in conferences across the world but electronic music conferences are, are just slightly different <laughs> and mm -hmm. way more fun than yeah. the traditional <laughs> music conferences the after party really, are, but, are the best <laughs> yeah and they're always in really really nice places uh, where it's sunny shiny you have the sea so uh, I mean I'm, I'm going to when I'm going to music base it's, it's a great business conference but it's mm. a natural. So, I mean, it's, it's a great music city, but it's, I love the sea. And I like to go to Ibiza. I like to go to Miami. <laughs> it's, you got your opinion. Your heart. So. You, you actually started yeah. from, uh, from Slovenia, right? From Ljubljana. Yeah. And yeah. you got your headquarters there. And, and so you're spending so much, but you probably have a Europe in your heart. Not even, yeah. for, not, not only for the electronic music, but actually for, for the culture as well. Uh, I wanted to check on uh, Eduardo if. Uh... Yeah, can you hear me for the first time? No. Yeah, not better. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, uh, I have to say that uh, I really love your platform because uh, I think that you are like, uh, mm, how can I say, um, democratizing the. Mm, 
electronic music and not only the electronic music scene. You are uh, giving um, power to users. So this is, uh, I think, a, a really cool idea because you have people that can uh, share data and uh, to study data with your platform. And uh, it's a very, very cool, very, very cool uh, idea and uh, something that uh, I hope to use more uh, in my future, in my, in my career, I hope. Thank you. But uh, I have uh, another question, if uh, I can. I, yeah. I would like to know uh, if you can say, are you planning to do uh, something in particular? Can you uh, tell us more? Uh, can you anticipate uh, something for us? Uh, or, so uh, uh, in terms of new, new features? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah, we're... we're right now we're working on um on a couple of features that will help uh, artists uh, because right now our main clients are not artists are they're professionals like you know, corporations like labels or dsps um the artists are using their free light packages because they can check their own data for free but yeah. we want to upgrade their experience so we're going to integrate a couple of complementary features um that will help them with um with growing their career in terms especially in terms of recording music as, as well as life so this is all i can disclose right now but okay. um yeah stick around so it's it's gonna be the first version should be out in may uh it's gonna be pretty pretty cool Mm, nice. And when we can we expect, expect uh, if you can say uh, this new implementation? I mean, if you can give us a, a roughly a timeline. I mean, are we talking about months? Are we talking about years? In May. In um, May. Okay. Nice. Yes, yeah, that's 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 the deadline now because we want to announce it uh, in Nashville in at Music Base. Hopefully, I'll have some something to tell by IMS, but nice. no promises. <laughs> okay, uh, Edo, uh, have you got any other uh, question for Vajia? Uh, not for the moment, thank you. Okay. I think that uh, we are going to chat again because uh, this platform is very, very interesting. So I hope to meet you again. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, if, if you guys are at IMS, we should definitely meet, meet there. Oh. We are actually packing our bags right now. We're actually trying to <laughs> to, to find uh, and to fund uh, ourselves this uh, this amazing journey because last year was uh, amazing. It's uh, uh, we are actually looking forward to meet you there. Yeah, and we, too. And we hope to uh, hear about uh, your announcement about Vibrate cool. and about the new features. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Looking forward to it. So thank you very much for your time, uh, Vajja. And uh, thank you. good luck, and uh, thank you. we hope to hear from you again. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.